Um, so I have to ask you the nugget of my my podcast, which is, you know, I ask everybody who appears on the show, um, I would love to hear or for you to share a story of something magical or miraculous that's happened in your life. Maybe something inexplicable, maybe something mysterious, something that maybe we don't have language for yet. Something that's happened in your life that you classify as magical. Um, I'd love to hear it, whatever you have to share. Okay. I I could tell you about the day that my brother died because there was some magic that happened in there that was like the universe telling me that something was wrong. There was like a tremor in the force. But maybe if we ever, if I ever come back, I could share that story. I want to share something from the bike ride, which was for him, but it was still something magical. And this might seem mundane to people, but I think the main message of my book, which I will just show to people right here, 2012, A Bicycle Odyssey, the main message of my book is to invite people to look at their life as an epic journey, an epic tale, a story that they are the main character in. And sometimes as the main character, you're the villain. Sometimes you're the hero. Um, but that you're the main character in your story and you need to be present with your, with your, uh, with, with your life. So when we started our bike ride, we had not made contact with the place that we were going to end at. It was a chapel of sacred mirrors. It's an art retreat center in upstate New York. We left at the Golden Gate Bridge because of the documentary, The Bridge, which is about people that have gone there to end their lives. So we wanted to begin at a place that was kind of synonymous with suicide. And we wanted to end at a place that was all about the power of art, then how art can be used as a tool to heal. And so we ended at a place that we felt was like transcending pain. And um, so we did, hadn't made contact with them yet. We knew that we were going to go there. I called a few times. I got a little run around from some of the, the people that worked there. Um, I didn't expect to talk to Alex or Allison Gray at that moment. So we just said, let's go. We're just, we're going. If we get there and we never make contact, we'll just ride up on the last day. And we said, hey, we rode our bike 7,000 miles. And uh, uh, we did it for suicide awareness. And we were inspired by Alex's philosophy and art. Uh, do you have a place we could rent? Or can you tell us where we can go to get a hotel? You know? So when we were in... San Francisco or, or Santa Cruz, we spoke with an organization called MAPS, Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. All right. Alex Nelson's gray art is influenced by psychedelic journeys that they've taken. So when we were interviewed, when we were interviewing MAPS, originally I wanted to shoot a film for this, but it just got over too overwhelming. Um, so I decided to write a book instead. But I was interviewing uh, Brad Burge, who was kind of like um, the outreach coordinator for for MAPS. And and um, and he's like, so you're going to the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's our destination. He's like, he's like, so what did they say about your ride? And I was like, I don't know. They they don't know that we're doing it. They're like, yeah, they don't know? I was like, I called a few times, but I couldn't like, I didn't get any headway. And he's like, that's crazy. He's like, I know the Greys. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to them for you. So by the time we got back to Phoenix, I finally got an email from Brad and from Allison Gray saying like, we would love to have them. We're really supportive of their mission. Um, and I'm going to put you in contact with our hospitality manager and event coordinator, Sharon Stelludo. And you just, when I, anytime you need anything, you just, you, you email her. So I would email Sharon once a month. I'm going to backtrack a little bit from this point, but remember we made contact and it was because of maps about six months before we left on our bike ride, I was in full advertisement mode and I was like handing out flyers. I made little cards to put in coffee shops. I'm exhausted. I got up all morning I was making cold calls, calling different, uh, uh, places about uh, different uh, uh, mental health facilities across the country, getting them to like commit to like seeing us. And then I had to go to work and I was on my way home and I drove past this, uh, this coffee shop 
And I was like, you know what? I got a stack. I drove right past it. I'd never been there before. And I was like, I got a stack of cards in my car. I'm just going to do a U-turn and I'm going to go back there. So I go in there and I'm trying to find a place to put like the stack of cards. There's nothing there. And the woman behind the counter, she's like, you want to leave something to advertise? I was like, yeah. She's like, yeah, we don't do that. Our, our, the owner doesn't like that, but can I see what you're doing? So I hand her one of the cards. She's like, man, this is so important. You're riding your bike for suicide, suicide awareness. She's like, and you're going to where are you where are you stopping at? And I told her we were going to end at the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors. She's like, have you ever heard of maps? I was like, no, I've never heard of maps. She's like, would you like to come by? Like, maybe we'll talk like uh, later this week. So I went and I chatted with her. And if it wasn't for her, I would have never known about maps to even call maps to set up a meeting with them. Now back to, so that was just to me like one like pay attention to your experiences in your life and recognizing the the importance of one thing leading to another. It's very story. It's very narrative like, and there's like a magic that's in that, you know, it's the magic doesn't just happen in a book when we're reading the story about some fictional person or when we're watching a movie, it's happening in your life every single day. You just got to pay attention. So once a month, we're, you know, we were in contact with Chapel Sacred Mir- Mirrors and my contact to Sharon Stelludo. I email her once a month professionally just to say, hey, you haven't forgot about us, right? You haven't forgot about us. We're still on our way. And so um, the night before every big event, I would always call our contact and have like a five minute conversation. Well, when we were finally in Manhattan, and we were we were like three days away from finishing our bike ride. I called Sharon, and we ended up having like an hour long phone conversation. We were we we chatted as if as if we had known each other for a long time. And I really liked the sound of her voice. I thought it was really pretty. <laughs> so as soon as we got off the phone, I Google stalked her, and she was a looker. She not only had a pretty voice, she had a very pretty face. So when we got to uh, Cosm, I was, I was taken by her. And um, when I left, I, I gave her, we, we traded contact information and I, I talked to her as I was traveling back home. I took some time to travel home and um, Sharon, I, Sharon and I started dating. And, and even though we were living in on the opposite sides of the country and she's now my partner and she lives out here. She moved out like two years after I met her or three years after, after we met. Um, but I just think that like, there's something that like, if I wouldn't have stopped in, in that coffee shop, I would have never been connected to maps and maps wouldn't have connected me to the chapel of sacred mirrors to, and chapel of sacred mirrors connecting me to Sharon, my future partner. Now I say all of that. And another mess point of my, uh, another big message and theme in my book is the, when we have an experience, our ego needs to define it as positive or negative. That's just our what we need to do to try to like make sense of it. But I argue that an experience is just an experience. And it's what we choose when we're able to, to learn from that experience. Now, how do I meet Sharon, who's 3,500 miles away, if my brother isn't dead. If my brother hadn't died by suicide, I'm not riding my bike across the country for suicide awareness in his honor. So a negative experience, something that we decide is negative can lead to something that is super positive, just like something that we define as a positive experience can lead to a negative experience further down the road in the journey of our life. So I just invite people to look at their experiences that they're having. You're going to decide that it, you're going to like define it as positive or negative. Your ego is just going to do that. But if you can just be present enough to understand like, what is the thing that I need to learn from this experience and how do I grow stronger from it? Because as you grow through every single experience that you have, you have the ability to uh, learn much more about yourself than what you would have ever imagined you could learn about yourself. So 